In the previous presentation we took a look at the magnitude response of systems using plots. In this one I'm just going to add to that by showing how the phase uh, of, a, of the input to a system is altered uh, using plots as well. Um, so just quickly looking at the um, screen, um, you have a system shown here as a black box with an input and an output. And what I'll do is I'll sketch in a magnitude response of this system. Okay, so this is the magnitude response of the system down here. And I'll also sketch in the phase response of the system up here. And then I will show how the amplitudes and phases of the input signal will be modified by showing how the showing the amplitudes and phases of the output of the system. Okay. Um, so let's quickly first of all just sketch in the um, the the magnitude response. So that is a value of two. We'll, just, we'll assume the frequencies up to ten hertz will be amplified by by one. And then over 10 hertz, they'll be amplified by 2. And then, let's see, over 20 hertz, we'll amplify by 0 0.5. Okay, so that's the magnitude response, which you've already seen. Um, then let's sketch in the phase response of the system. Um, let's assume that the frequencies, for frequencies below 10 hertz, will, will impart a phase shift of pi over 2. For frequencies above 10 hertz, we'll impart a phase shift of plus pi over 2. Okay, so that's the phase response of the system. And you'll see that the vertical axis uh, has a range of values between minus pi and pi. And this is one of the common, more common ways of showing the phase shift of a, of a system. Uh, you could also see this being shown of, uh, as values between 0 and 2 pi. Um, and there's no need to show any other range of values because minus pi to pi shows a complete range of values um, for, for phase shift. And that's because if, if a, value, a phase shift of 3 pi over 2 is equivalent to minus pi over 2 due to what's known as phase unwrapping. So if you're not comfortable with that term phase unwrapping or that last sentence doesn't make sense, maybe you should um, spend a little bit of time trying to understand the term phase shifts and phase unwrapping. Um, but let's show a demonstration now. We'll show we have the phase response and the magnitude response of the system. Now let's see how that system behaves uh, for a particular input. Um, in this case we'll show three sinusoids. So we'll have one at 5 hertz. We'll have another sinusoid at say 13 hertz and another sinusoid of the same amplitude at 25 hertz. So we'll make them all the same amplitude going into the system. Um, now we're interested in phase in this example, so let's also say what the phase values are. In the previous example we assumed that the phase values were all zero, but let's give it a, something different here. Um, let's say the 5 hertz component has a phase shift of pi. Um, the 13 hertz component has a phase value of, let's give it a minus pi over 2. And the 25 hertz component, let's give it a phase value of plus pi over 2. Just to make my values easy to work with. Okay. So of course they can have any phase value. I'm just using uh, simple examples um, to make my calculations much easier. And let's take a look at how they amplitudes of these sinusoids are going to be changed by the system. So the input signal has three sinusoids, so it's an input signal made up of three sinusoids and three sinusoids all of the same amplitude, different phases. But let's see how the amplitudes are changed by the system. Um, so we can see from the frequency response of the system that any sinusoid less than 10 Hz will be amplified by one, or basically unchanged in terms of amplitude. So that 5 hertz component will have the same amplitude. The 13 hertz component, well, that 13 hertz component will be, um, just looking at the magnitude response, it'll be amplified by 2. Okay, you can see that there, it's about 2. So um, that'll be doubled up to a value of 40. While the 25 hertz component here, well, that's going to be multiplied by 
0 0.5. So that will be halved, it'll be brought down to a value of 10. Okay. It's a bit bigger than 10. Okay, there's 10. So that's how the amplitudes of the sinusoids will be altered. And you can see that the amplitudes of the input sinusoids are being multiplied by the magnitude response of the system. The phase response of the system, however, operates differently. Um, phases are added to the input phases. So let's just run through an example of that. Um, take a look at the 5 hertz component. The 5 hertz sinusoid had a phase value of pi, so its output phase value will be have a value of pi over 2 added to it, which means that the output phase value will be 3 pi over 2. So again, the frequency doesn't change. So you'll see that both that the frequency of sinusoids never change are are never changed by a, a system, well a linear time invariant system. Um, so that value will be three pi over two. The phase will be three pi over two. Um, but th th that's equivalent due to phase unwrapping. A value of three pi over two is the same as minus pi over two. So let's just show it as minus pi over 2 just to be within the range of minus pi and pi. Okay. Um, next example um, is the 13 hertz component. That 13 hertz component has a phase value going into the system of minus pi over 2. The phase response tells me that 13 hertz components will be uh, have a phase shift of minus pi over 2 imparted. So the overall phase shift is then going to be minus pi. So it's minus pi coming in, system imparts minus pi radians of a phase shift, or sorry, yeah, minus pi radians of a phase shift, uh, minus pi over two radians of a phase shift. So the overall phase shift is then minus pi. Then this 25 hertz component has an input of phase of pi over two, and it's also going to have a phase shift of minus pi over 2, so the overall phase shift then, overall phase of the output will be 0. Okay. And there are the phases of the output of those sinusoids. So three sinusoids went in, three sinusoids will come out, the frequency of the sinusoids won't change, but the amplitudes and phases of the sinusoids will change. Okay, um, I think that's probably enough. Um, if you need another demonstration of this, please post a comment, and if there's enough interest, I will put one together.